don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. Last night was the first CNN Democratic debate, and I'm going to break down the highlights. So on stage was Montana Governor Steve Bullock, author Marianne Williamson, former Maryland Representative John Delaney, Ohio Representative Tim Ryan, former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, former Texas Representative Beto O'Rourke, South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Now, the last time that I did a breakdown video on a debate, it was the NBC debate a month ago. And the way I structured it was I had the winners, the losers, and the maintainers. Now, I'm still going to categorize all of these candidates into those each of those categories, but I'll do that at the end of this video. I really don't want to spend too much time on a bunch of losers that we're not going to see much more of after this debate. So I really here want to focus on the highlights. And the highlights mostly were Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. They took down the house. Now, I will have a video as well, uh, or a clip from Marianne Williamson. I thought Williamson had the best answer on race. But everything else, I mean, it was the Bernie and Warren show. So to start off here, there was a lot of discussion, thankfully, about health care. But the questions, like all the questions, came with a right-wing framing. So before I get to the clip here, this from Vox. Tapper asked Elizabeth Warren if she's, quote, with Bernie on Medicare for All, even though the middle class would pay more in taxes. Warren responded not by discussing the policy in terms of taxes, a frame the GOP has frequently deployed, but by talking about the total cost American families pay now for their health coverage through both taxes and the cost of health insurance. So I actually thought that uh, I'm not going to show the clip because it was it really wasn't a highlight, but I thought that Warren's framing on that was uh, a solid way to take it. So instead of focusing on, yeah, you're paying more in taxes because, yeah, you're paying more in taxes, but you're not paying anything in health insurance. So you're actually paying less through taxes than your health insurance. The way Warren describes it is you pay less overall. So it's about the cost. I think that's a good way to, to frame that discussion. But um, let me here show you Bernie's answer here, because Bernie was a, uh, <laughs> a little more direct about Jake Tapper's question. They can't go to the doctor. And when they come out of the hospital, they go bankrupt. All right. <clears throat> what I am talking about and others up here are talking about is no deductibles and no co-payments. And Jake, your question is a Republican talking point. At the end of the day, and by the way, and by the way, by the way, the healthcare industry will be advertising tonight on this program. Thank you, Senator. Senator Warren, it's your turn. Oh, can I complete that, please? And your time is up, they 30 seconds. They will be seconds. advertising tonight with that talking point. That was an amazing moment. And look, there were a lot of highlights out of this debate. I could have done multiple separate videos on each of these clips that I'm going to show you because each of them really deserve their uh, their own attention. But so Bernie's initial answer here saying that Jake Tapper correctly framing Jake Tapper's question as a as a Republican talking point was the right thing to do. But then he brings it into a fact, which I'm going to show you why it's a fact in uh, in a second here how CNN is going to run ads from pharmaceutical companies. Because, of course. I mean, if you, if you ever wonder why these massive networks, when they, first of all, they barely cover Bernie Sanders and his plans, but when they do cover him, they usually do it to smear him. If you wonder why they do that, all you have to do is take a look at some of their ads. Bernie is going after these massive corporations, be it Big Pharma be it fossil fuel companies, these massive giants that spend a lot of ads, spend, <laughs> or buy a lot of ads on CNN and other networks. Bernie, if, if you only watch, if people in your family, people you know, maybe your parents, maybe your grandparents, whoever, if, if they're only watching CNN and MSNBC to get their information, they have a very uninformed and skewed view of the world because they're not getting the facts. They're not being told this. They're not being told why they're only getting one side of the arguments when it comes to issues or policies like Medicare for All. So Bernie there said that tonight, Big Pharma is, is going to play ads on this debate, 
And he was right. So this tweet went out from uh, Dan Diamond uh, saying that Bernie mentioned that the healthcare industry was running commercials during the CNN debate. He's right. Here's a clip of the pharma go boldly uh, of, of the pharma go boldly campaign. So it's a 14 second clip. I'm not going to play the clip, but you get the idea. They played that ad. I'll link to actually everything here I'm referencing, whether it's the clips or any um, information I'm bringing in. I always link to my sources below the video so you can check out that clip if you want below the video. But of course, <laughs> Bernie was exactly right about that. Now, again, more on healthcare here. There is also this fantastic exchange between Bernie and Tim Ryan on uh, on the healthcare, uh, his healthcare bill. Now, I did a separate video on this entire exchange and really dove into it. But let me just give you a very quick snippet of it here, just to remind you of what this highlight was. You don't know that. Second Bernie. of all, we'll come I, to you in a second, I do know, and I wrote the damn bill. <laughs> now, <laughs> that clip doesn't get old. I, I mean, I've seen that clip. Uh, over and over and over again now, and I, I haven't grown tired of it. Um, so as I said, there's a separate video on that. I'll link to it uh, above this video if you want to watch that, or just go watch it after this video. But um, so this is something that I actually didn't mention or forgot to mention in that previous video. This, imagine this Bernie, Bernie Sanders with this attitude up against Donald Trump on the debate stage. There is just no comparison. Bernie not only has the attitude, as you saw there, to deal with Donald Trump, he also has the facts. He has the platform, he has the policies, he has the movement behind him. Bernie is absolutely the best person to go up against Donald Trump because he's the antithesis of Donald Trump, just the complete opposite of what Donald Trump is. Donald Trump pretends to be a populist, he's a fake populist, he pretends to be for the people, he's not for the people. Bernie Sanders actually is for the people, has a 40-year record of standing up for the people, has a record of going against the wealthy, the powerful, the special interests. He has, and his entire platform, he takes no money from anywhere else except individual donors. He doesn't even have private fundraisers. So this is a man of the people. And you see that attitude on stage. This is what we wanted in the last debate that we didn't get. But I'm glad we got it here. And I hope that Bernie continues this up uh, going forward because this, I mean, this shows you that Bernie's in this to fight. And on top of that, None of these moments are staged. So in that last debate, you had that Kamala Harris moment between Kamala and, and Joe Biden. That was completely planned for Kamala Harris. They even had T-shirts printed and ready for that. So when you have when you have politicians, candidates like that, that are just completely staged, phony, their moments are pre-planned. Compare that to Bernie Sanders, who is just in the moment. I mean, he didn't know that Tim Ryan was going to interject there. He just came out and, and said, I wrote the damn bill. I mean, this is who Bernie is. I mean, I don't even, I don't know how people don't see this. So <laughs> I think a lot of my audience understands this, but if this isn't obvious to you, I don't know what else to say. Bernie is a genuine person. All right. Um, next clip here. This is, uh, all of these clips are so good. And I have more information on this next clip as well. So this is, uh, Bernie, <laughs> Bernie going after John Delaney on health care. On the Medicare for all, the hospitals will save substantial sums of money because they're not going to be spending a fortune doing billing and the other bureaucratic things that they have to do today. I've done Second of all, maybe you did that and made money off of health care, but our job is to run a nonprofit health care <laughs> system. Now, again, this is low key. Maybe I'm saying low key one of the best moments just because the the reaction wasn't as loud as it was when Bernie said I wrote the damn bill. But this is again one of the top moments of the night. If you know the data, if you know John Delaney, know his history, know where he's made his millions. John Delaney is worth over a hundred million dollars. I think it's over two hundred million dollars he's worth. Let me show you just how right Bernie is here. So this is reporting on John Delaney from Forbes from two thousand and six. But powerful backers believe in him. The son of a Woodridge, New Jersey Union electrician, Delaney got a law degree from Georgetown, but wanted to run something. For 15 grand, he bought a home healthcare operator, but realized the real dough was in lending to these outfits, not running them. Supported by longtime mentor John Rowe, his uncle and former chief of insurer Atna, Delaney started Healthcare Financial Partners in 1993. 
He got $25 million to help finance the business after a friend introduced him to Tom Steyer, founder of uh, Fairlawn Capital Management, a $16.4 billion hedge fund. Delaney took Healthcare Financial Public and sold it in 1999 for $493 million to Heller Financial, now part of GE Capital. So if you happen to watch my debate CNN Debate Night 1 preview video. Uh, it was a live stream video. I discussed how John Delaney, at some point in this debate, will talk about how he's self-made, how he's the son of a union guy and he's just here to help people. John Delaney did exactly that. He pretended to be that guy, but he is a total fraud. Who the hell has a buddy? Hey, I'm starting a business. Oh, oh, you got $25 million to lend me for that business. Fantastic. Who... Who has these connections? John Delaney, pretending to start from the bottom, gets $25 million from Tom Steyer, his uncle, the chief insurer of Aetna, a, a massive insurance company. And this is a guy who is fighting against Medicare for all. He made his money in private health care. No wonder he doesn't want Medicare for all. And on top of that, it's not just Delaney's past either. This reporting from Sludge. Presidential candidate who attacked Medicare for All is invested in healthcare companies. Former Representative John Delaney assailed Medicare for All and asked Alexandria Casa Cortez to debate him. Turns out he has a financial stake in the for profit healthcare industry. And I'll have a link to that article as well below the video so you can learn more about that. John Delaney, total fraud. And just one more thing on John Delaney. He spoke way too much during that debate. I mean, it, it felt like they were putting every other question to, to John Delaney or trying to put John Delaney up against every every other candidate on stage. I have no idea. John Delaney is pulling out like 1%. Why is he even in this discussion, let alone as much as he was? It, it was absurd. So in, in terms of Bernie's performance, it appeared to uh, help him. So this tweet from Holly Otterbein of uh, Politico. After a solid debate performance, the Bernie Sanders campaign announces it raised $1.1 million and received more than 70,000 donations since yesterday. And that's on top of the fact that Bernie Sanders has the most individual donors already, the most individual donations already, and the most volunteers already. Bernie Sanders already has the movement behind him. No other candidate even comes close to his numbers. Now... As I said earlier, this really was the uh, Bernie and Warren show. So they had a, a, a tag team job here on, on multiple uh, issues. So Warren here hits Delaney on, in maybe, or at least is in competition with uh, Bernie's, uh, one of Bernie's moments for the best moment of the night. I don't understand why anybody goes to all the trouble of running for president of the United States just to talk about what we really can't do and shouldn't fight for. <laughs> so this was such a good line, and I'm glad somebody said it. There are way too many candidates in this race, and they are in this race simply to raise their own profile or for their own ego. That's it. John Delaney has zero chance of winning this primary. John Hickenlooper, zero chance. I mean, I, let me go. I can go down the list, but I'm going to forget all the names. There are so many people in this race that have a zero chance of winning this primary, and a lot of them know it. But whether it's their own ego or their desire to get their name out there, that's why they're running. It's kind of disgusting, actually. And Elizabeth Warren correctly called it out here, and the look on John Delaney's face, I mean... He has no response because he knows it's true. He's just, I mean, why are you running if you're not fighting for anything? It, 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 it's so, it's like, it's, it's annoying, but it's also just disgusting. It shows you how much of, of a, a horrible human being you are to try and run for president just to try and uh, talk shit about everybody else and their plans for what they want to do for the country. It, it's absurd. Now, um, I also want to show you to give you an idea here of, of really how closely Bernie and Warren were uh, were working the stage, this uh, was clipped by uh, Twitter user Ashley Star Star. Um, take a look at this. Take a look at Warren's eyes, and look at 
<laughs> I'm going to play this over a few times. The Bernie and, and Warren, look, they look at each other, and I'm going to pause it on Warren's face here for a second. Warren and Bernie, they know. You know that look that Warren's giving there. It, it's This is exactly actually what um, uh, Ashley Starstar on Twitter tweeted out in, in her caption to this clip. Uh, it's the uh, can you believe these assholes kind of look. <laughs> That's exactly the look that Elizabeth Warren is giving. These two are the uh, really the only ones on stage that that really care to help people and have at the same time any actual chance at winning the primary. Um, now let me get to Marianne Williamson. So I have one clip on Marianne Williamson as as well. I thought she had a fairly solid debate performance. Except for her walk back on Medicare for All. So I actually discussed this in my debate preview as well. I think she was on Stephen Colbert where she discussed that she... This is somebody who had signed the TYT pledge. The TYT pledge includes Medicare for All. But now she's walked back on Medicare for All. To be kind of fair to her, I guess, I saw an interview with her after this debate with Jenk Uger on TYT. And she discussed how um she... In that moment when she was on stage essentially agreeing with John Delaney that she second-guessed herself. And it sounds like she may be back in support of Medicare for All. I don't know. It could be just her performance or um the answers that she's giving to Jenk because it's Jenk's TYT pledge that she signed. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see what she says in the future on Medicare for All. I do think, actually, Marion Williamson has the potential, or she may have already uh, even made the, the next debates. So... She's going to be in this a little longer, at least, than some other the other people on the stage here. Um, but, yeah, it was a bad answer on Medicare for All. But everything else, she had fairly solid answers. But her best response and the best answer on race out of anybody on stage was from Marianne Williamson. Let me show you a clip of that here. What makes you qualified to determine how much is owed in reparations? Well, first of all, it's not $500 billion in financial assistance. It's $500 billion, 200 to $500 billion payment of a debt that is owed. That is what reparations is. We need some deep truth telling when it comes. We don't need another commission to look at evidence. I appreciate what uh, Congressman O'Rourke has said. It is time for us to simply realize that this country will not heal. All that a country is is a collection of people. People heal when there's some deep truth telling. We need to recognize that when it comes to the economic gap between blacks and whites in America, it does come from a great injustice that has never been dealt with. And I believe that anything less than $100 billion is is an insult, and I believe that 200 to 500 billion is, is politically feasible today because so many Americans realize there is an injustice that continues to form a toxicity underneath the surface, an emotional turbulence Ms. that Williamson, only reparations Thank will you be very much. So I think Williamson has a great argument here. Reparations is a debt owed. She's gone deeper on this uh, in her, funny enough, in her interview with Dave Rubin. Uh, she's very well read. She's historical. She's made arguments before about how this has uh, occurred in, in in other countries or how other countries ha- have dealt with this. So the Germans have repaid Jewish communities, just as one example. Um, and if you look at the Google searches after the debate, so let me show you first before the debate, uh, the most searched candidates here: uh, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Williamson, Steve Bullock, Amy Klobuchar, and following the debate. It's pretty much all Williamson, except for Steve Bullock, funny enough, in his own state. A lot of people in in his own state, I guess, didn't know who he was, so they looked him up. Um, but yeah, Marion Williamson here, I think, deserves some credit for having a, uh, a solid performance in this debate. Now let me get to, I guess, just a quick breakdown here of the maintainers, the losers, and the winners. Someone I haven't mentioned at all, but I think he maintained his whatever movement, (laughs) he has no movement, whatever momentum he has, uh, especially when it comes to his massive donors that are funding his campaign, his special interest donors, Pete Buttigieg, I think, is a maintainer. I didn't think he really fumbled anywhere. I didn't think he had any real highlights, but he's the kind of guy that has solid answers, at least rhetorically. So if you're, you know, the average Democratic voter, you don't know too much about these candidates, um, you don't know that Pete Buttigieg is simply propped up by big money. You will like his answers. He, uh, they're they're 
formulated well. He delivers them well. So I think he's going to maintain also simply by the fact that he has so much money from all these massive donors that are that are uh, funding him. Um, but he's the only maintainer I have on this stage. Let me give you the list of the losers. So the losers from this debate is almost everybody else. Steve Bullock, uh, John Delaney, Tim Ryan, John Hickenlooper, Amy Klobuchar, and Beto O'Rourke. There is absolutely nothing that these candidates offer the conversation that someone else doesn't already offer. I mean, Pete Buttigieg is the moderate in the race. He's the centrist. Him and Kamala Harris, that's their role here. These other candidates, all these losers, I don't know why they're in the race. They offer nothing, and they're not going to last all that much longer. Getting to the winners, uh, I think it's kind of obvious based on who I covered here. So Marion Williamson, I do think, is a winner here uh, in this debate. Elizabeth Warren, I think, is a winner in this debate. And, of course, Bernie Sanders, I thought, had the best performance of the entire debate and, of course, is a winner as well. So overall, I thought this was a, a solid debate. Now, look. There is kind of a problem here with these with these debates. So the focus is going to be largely on performance. If you know, if you already are educated on, on who is working for people and who isn't, if you're aware of who is having private fundraisers, who's taking uh, corporate money and who's not, that kind of divides the field immediately. I mean, you have Bernie Sanders as I discussed, the guy with the biggest grassroots movement doesn't have, doesn't take any corporate money, doesn't have any private fundraisers. That's, uh, that part of it is so, it's important to focus on because it really informs you in what these candidates are about, who they represent. So it's one thing to have a good answer to a question in a debate and sound like, you know, oh, you're standing up for the average person. You just want to help people. But if you know who funds their campaigns, if you know who is in their circles, then none of none of their answers matter. It's all about performance. It's all about who these candidates actually are, what their platforms are, who they are funded by. That's what actually matters here. So that's why they're... I think there's a lot of a, of a focus on performance, but a lot of it is because we know who these candidates are already. So it's about how to reach people. When you're in these debates, which is why I thought it was important that Bernie came out strong here with the kind of performance that he had in this debate, because that's how you get people who you haven't got yet, is with your performance. And then maybe at that point, they begin to look a little more into you, into your platform, what you're about, who supports you, and that kind of thing. But you have to get them in with your performance, with your rhetoric in, in many cases. Um, and also, I kind of said this in the, the debate preview, I don't... I don't think there's a point to the audience. The audience, I think, hurts these debates. It hurts the ability to have a real conversation about policy, a, a real substantive conversation about about the issues. But CNN, all these networks have these these big audiences there. I guess in some ways, in I mean, in this case, it did help. It helped Bernie. It helped Elizabeth Warren. But oftentimes, what's able to happen as what happened in the last debate, you have someone like Kamala Harris, who is not fighting for the people, is propped up by a lot of the same big donors that a lot of these other smaller candidates or even someone like Pete Buttigieg has behind him. Um, and they're able to to land, you know, a solid shot like Kamala Harris did on Joe Biden, and that gets them some attention. That's one of the downsides to having a massive crowd like this. You don't actually get into the substance, into the records into who funds them, into their policies, all that stuff. So I guess the one benefit here is that, as I said, it did help Bernie and Warren in this case, but that isn't always going to be the case. If you want to actually get into the substance, actually begin informing people watching at home on these issues, you need to have answers that are longer than a minute. <laughs> but when there are 10 people on stage, this is the format they have to go with. So I'm hoping when these debates begin to be cut down, which they will in September, they uh, doubled the requirements for, for the debates going forward, uh, at least for September. So there's going to be a lot of people that are, that are going to be um, completely cut out of the conversation finally. And maybe in the next debate, we will begin to have a real conversation about policy substance.